All right, what's up, guys? Happy holidays. We are closing in on the end of the year for the podcast. We'll probably have one more episode this year before we go into the new year, which will be exciting. We've got, Ooh. we've already got a trip lined up, Will, for next year. Oh, yeah, we do. Um, I mean, we haven't booked it yet, but I would say it's like at least a 90% chance we're already going. Yes. So come say hello to us in Arizona. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll be there for MLP and then the Desert Ridge Open PPA tournament. Yes, please come and tell Chris he is 3-5 at best in person. It would just make my day to witness that. Like You guys won't do it. You won't do it. I bet yeah, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> they won't say it to my face. <laughs> yeah, they will. Are you kidding me? I admit they will. People in my local area do it to me all the time. And I sometimes I never know when they're joking or being serious. And then it's really <laughs> awkward because I try and get serious. And I go, no, 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 I'm not actually a 3-5. And they're like, dude, I, I know I'm just messing with you. And I'm like, oh. uh, <laughs> then it feels like really weird because I'm like defending myself. It just, it gets awkward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, but yeah, okay. okay, well, today there was some, I mean, not today, but this week weekend. there's been some decent amount of news. Mm -hmm. So we had the exhibition match with the tennis pros. We had Sam Query, uh, Jack Sock. John Isner. John and Isner Don, and then Donald, Donald Young. Young. Yep. Yep. And then we also had the MLP draft. So we're going to talk about the exhibition match because there was some fun stuff that happened in there. And then we'll get into some of our thoughts on the MLP draft, especially since Will and I will be at the first one. It'll be kind of fun to chat about that. Yes. But okay, there's a few main things I wanted to talk about with the exhibition match. So it was essentially just an event for the tennis pros to play pickleball with the top pros. The format... Hardly made sense to me. Honestly, I couldn't even tell you exactly how it worked. There were so many games being played. The rally scoring format was different than MLP. Even mm -hmm. the pros were confused. I was confused. I was told by someone there that the format changed two or three times in a day, and even the refs were having a hard time keeping up. And then Shoot, sometimes even the players, the, <laughs> yeah, even the the players were confused. And then sometimes when it was a tight game and it was going to a win by one, the pros would tell the ref. No, we're playing win by two. So it was like yeah. the pros got to just dictate what they wanted. Exactly. So, I thought that was funny. And it I, happened I while it we was were streaming funny. it. It was our first What's time that? streaming. It was our first time streaming too. And I thought that yeah. was cool. So shout out to all you guys out there that I guess tuned into our, our first little live stream with us together. That was yeah. actually pretty fun interacting with you guys. Yeah, I thought it was great interacting with everyone. Uh, it was a good time. Maybe we'll do some more uh, next year. But yeah, the whole thing, I don't know. I would say... It felt very put together last minute. People didn't really know what was going on. It was fun to see some of the matches, but the way they scored everything, I don't even know what the format was, but basically what I saw was the final mixed matches that got played were worth as many games as if you won like the last three games in a row. So essentially the only thing that really mattered was the mixed game at the end. Everything else was kind of just filler. Interesting. All right. The only thing that I don't even know really who who won the whole entire... I think entire, it was Query's team. It was Query's team? Okay. Well, it was just funny because I saw a post from uh, Jay DeVillier. Like, it was a fun time, but we lost. And then somebody responded, was like, dang, all of France is taking L's today. And it's because it was in relation to the World Cup finals because France <laughs> lost. And I, I comment as, oh man, too soon. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that Jay is too soon. <laughs> Jay responded back and was like, nah, it's true though. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. That's funny. Jay's such a good sport. Yeah, no, he is a good sport. But speaking of Jay real quick, uh, he's also a savage. Did you hear about that tweet? The little, the little tweet thing oh, that yeah. happened. Okay. With so, Renee Stubb or whatever yeah, her name is. R Renee Stubbs. Right, for, for those of you who don't know, if you didn't see it, so Renee Stubbs is a former pro tennis player and also a commentator. And do you remember what the tweet says? She says something along the lines of, for anybody who's wondering, I will not be investing in a pickleball team or watch pickleball just like pickleball watch. in general yeah she was like i'll yeah. never watch this like she's basically just hating on pickleball <laughs> basically yeah and she's like i'd rather watch paint dry and then jay responded back with like the savagery he was like i'm sorry i'm a huge fan of tennis but i literally had to google to see who you are and find out that you are somewhat relevant <laughs> and then he was just like you can't 
you know, be hating on one of the fastest growing sports in America. Just please keep an open mind. And I was like, dang, she got clapped. And then after that, Nick Kyrgios came into the chat and was like, I think LeBron James and Kevin Durant know a little bit more about what to invest in. And damn, Nick Kyrgios came in with the encore. And I was like, oh, somebody call an ambulance. If you read that whole thread, first of all, it's hilarious because all of her other tweets hardly get any engagement, like 10 comments or so. And then this one, 100 to 200 comments. And people, some people were agreeing. Obviously, there were some tennis people in there. But then you have just all these other people blasting her. And she would respond to every single one. And you could just tell she was so bitter and salty. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, if she got some publicity, it worked. There you go. Yeah, I mean, clear, clearly she probably got the attention she wanted. But it's just... <laughs> I don't know. One of those <laughs> tweets where you're like, this is classic tennis player mindset. On, on behalf of all the pickleball community, you're welcome for helping you stay more relevant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even tennis that kept you relevant. It was pickleball. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Moving on, moving on. Yes, moving on. Okay, so the exhibition match, w- the whole team format, whatever, we're just going to kind of gloss over that. There was really two main matches that were the highlight of this whole event. Mm-hmm. That was Annalie Waters and Jesse Irvin yep. versus Jack Sock and John Isner. Yes. And then we also had a men's match that was Ben Johns and Matt Wright yep. versus Jack Sock and John Isner. No, no, Jack Sock and Sam Query. Oh, was it Sam? Oh, you're right. It was Sam. It wasn't. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yep. Okay. Yep. Let's talk about the men's match first. Okay. So you uh, you clipped it, you did a highlight on it, and then I watched your highlight because I didn't get to watch it live. Yep. Did you watch it live? No, I I, I couldn't. I went to go watch uh, Avatar: <laughs> Way of Water. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that right. was already that was already set in stone by my girlfriend, so I had to skip it. But uh, I did uh, come back and I rewatched the stream. Well, really, just that match, and yeah. it went just about the way I thought it would go, to be quite honest with you. They won in two two sets, two, two games straight. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. I actually don't quite remember the final score. I think the first... It was 12-10, 11-4. Okay, yeah. I remember the first one being close and then 10-4. And um, yeah, I thought it went just as well as uh, it could have gone for uh, for Sam and, and Sock. And, and granted that, um, you know, Quarry and Sock... Uh, like, like Sock plays. Obviously, Sock, Sock plays pickleball avidly. Like, I know he's played with Jay Davillier quite a few times, even with my buddy Alvaro a few times, and everybody tells me he's good. And of course, he'd be good. He's like one of the best doubles players, tennis doubles players in the world. And the first game was close, maybe just because, I don't know, they were warming up or Matt and Ben had to kind of figure out, you know, what to do and get in a rhythm. But then the second game, you know, 11 4, I think that's a. Uh, pretty easy win on on the second go around i will say i was extremely impressed with jack sock because i haven't seen any clips of him playing Mm -hmm. pickleball before maybe i've heard it talked about briefly but he i think if he play i mean he's probably a top 20 men's player right now yeah i yeah like at least for sure for sure i would say i would give it to him I was I was extremely impressed with him. Just watching him play, it felt like he had been playing pickleball for quite a while. He felt like a natural, knew what he was doing. I mean, obviously an amazing athlete. His dude was covering so much court. It was ridiculous. Man could Ernie really well. Stinks yeah, were solid. ATP, Resets were good. He, he had, yeah. yeah, I mean, he had it all. Like, like I said. I mean, he yeah. just looked like a pickleball player. <clears throat> yeah, no, he's just a great player in general. And I think he's been playing pickleball like off and on, or at least recreationally for, I think, at least a year now to be yeah. quite honest with you uh what do you think about uh sam sam though okay so i had gotten a text from my brother yeah the first day this was happening and he said dude sam is so bad what <laughs> yeah he is like he's terrible he's like he looks like a 5-0 right now he's just missing easy volleys and when i tuned in sam actually did look like he was having a pretty rough time but all of the pros john isner included because he wasn't looking so hot As the weekend progressed, they seemed to get more and more comfortable and kind of set in. So, you know, Mm -hmm. maybe there was a little bit of adjusting and whatnot. But I, after watching, my initial thought was his top 10 comment in three months, no shot. Zero (laughs) shot. I think no way. I have to note, like, 
Did he say top 10 in, in doubles or singles or he just, did he just mean doubles. in general? Oh, in doubles. Okay. Hmm. Um, I think there is no way. I mean, first of all, he's probably already at the three month mark from when he made that comment. Yeah. He might have been saying three months for when the next year starts. But at that point, you had all this time to practice. So uh, however you want to look at it, yeah. he's not there now. And I don't think he'll be there in three months from now. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. I, I think he'll be, maybe I'll give him like another six months. But honestly, if he if he made it, like let's say he made it to like top 24, like Jack Sock levels in the next three months, I I wouldn't be surprised. This is my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I think I think he has the potential to be good. But certain things just looked unnatural still. Like he, some of his movements or the way he did certain shots just felt awkward. Where when I was watching Jack Sock, I just felt that he knew exactly what he was doing. He felt like he had all the the shots that a pickleball ball, shots, ball yeah, player would and have. And the experience and whatnot. I think that's really just what it is. It's just the the lack of experience from, you know, Query, probably Donald Young and Isner as well, whereas Jack, yeah, you're right, Jack just looked like he had it down. He, he, he had the positioning down. He understood the strengths and reasons why he would stack. I, I don't know if you remember seeing, but I, on the stream when he's playing, he was like, you know, you should stand here, or maybe I should stand here, or he was conversing with you yeah. know, his fellow teammates, like what we should do to be optimal, you know, and yeah. put him on the left side, et cetera. But um, I think there was one instance, maybe it was with, I can't remember if it was with Sam or with Isner, but they were like, no, let's not snack. It's too confusing. And Jack was like, <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was it was very fun to watch, but I don't think, I don't, in my opinion, Sam is never going to be number one. I don't know if he ever said that or anywhere, but that's just kind of the vibe you got, and I just don't think that's going to happen. Okay, okay. I think he'll be good, though. I think he'll be good. What about? Uh, I think I think he's got the potential to be good. Okay. His earnings think- were really good. He's so tall. Yes, his earnings are really tall. He had some really nice poaches as well. He got this one yes, sweet he did. poach and hit it down the line, like yes, Ben Johns. That was pretty sweet. I was like, whoa. That was, that was a really sweet shot. It was like two steps, like one one lunge and a step, and he zipped yeah. by. That was pretty impressive. That was good stuff. So the men's match was interesting. I mean, the first one being as close as it was, I was a little surprised. It's always kind of hard to tell in an exhibition match like this. Was it, you know, the first game they weren't playing as hard? Did they turn up the second game? Was, I don't know. There's just a lot of and not, not that to say that answered. Yeah, it's just, it's hard to know. I mean, they were obviously going to play well, but I am a little surprised the first game was so close. And I'd love to know if they played 10 times what the scores would look like in 10 games. I think somewhere Matt, Matt Wright said in an interview or to someone, he said he was playing around 75 to 80%. Ben Johns agreed. Okay. I mean, obviously, you can take that for for what you will. But also, it's an exhibition match. Money's not on the line. I bet you, if money's on the line, right? They yeah. are. They're isoing Jack Sock. Like they're like Jack Sock is not touching a ball. Like you know, yeah. And they're attacking Sam. And I think I, I feel like they would have picked them apart a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I, I agree. Also, I, did that? I don't know if you saw the. Well, I mean, you had to have seen. I don't know if you'll remember, but. Uh, ben hit this really sick Ernie. He went, he when he jumped from the left box, he looked like he was going to hit a backhand cross court Ernie. Yeah. And as the ball was mid flight, he switched to a forehand and hit it down the line. Yeah, I saw that one. That yeah. was really good. That was sick. No, it was sick. Yeah, he, he made that quick adjustment while in midair and he snapped it down. Yeah, I don't think they got a, did they get a paddle on it? It was against Sam, right? No, I think, I think it was just a clean, a clean shot. Clean yeah. winner. Clean winner. That was yep. good. So, yeah, the men's match was, I don't know, it was interesting. Obviously, 2-0, so nothing too crazy. But, you know, maybe a little closer than we thought. The one right. I thought now yeah. was the most interesting was the women versus men match. Because I had several thoughts going into this. So, prior to the match, Isner just really hadn't been playing that well. You could tell he wasn't very comfortable dinking. His resets didn't seem that great. It was really just the until, stuff until the kitchen. The third, until the third game, though. In the third no, game. I just mean throughout the whole day, oh, not even the in this day. match. Okay. Gotcha. I, I do think in the match, you know, it still didn't seem amazing in the early games. But I was most curious about this one because 
everyone's been talking about where would Anna Lee rank? And, you know, uh-huh. all the Facebook warriors are saying she'd be top 10 or people are even saying she's better than Ben. She would she would beat Ben if they played a bunch of times. Singles no. or doubles doesn't matter. No. We, we've been seeing all of that. And without it happening, we don't really know. We've obviously seen things. There was an interview when JW and Anna Lee partnered and they asked in the interview, have you guys ever played singles together and who wins? And Anna Lee said, yeah, he wins like every time we play. And that's just JW, let alone Ben, or many of the other top guys. So going into this, I thought, this is perfect. Jack Sock is quite good at the game. Uh, John, eh, he's a little dicier. And then you've got two top females. This will yeah. almost be perfect. Yes, First almost. game. Mm-hmm. First game, the women pickle them. It was crazy. I it was pretty awesome. I knew they were... Thought they were going to get beat, but I didn't expect a pickle. I was like, okay, wow, that's crazy. Second game, back and forth. I don't remember the exact score, but it was a super good game. Very entertaining. A lot of amazing points. 12-10. Both. Uh, what's that? That was the score, 12-10. I'm pretty 12, sure it was 12 in that 10. one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, actually, I think you are right. Yes. And then just a lot of amazing shots in there. But athleticism on everyone's part, the overheads from the guys were crazy. <laughs> Isner's reach is just so high. Yeah, no, it was insane. Even I mean, even Jack Sox reach. There was one he like jumped up and hit this smashing overhead that actually Italy actually blocked back. Um, uh, that one was pretty wild as well. They were just going at it. Dude, watching them jump and hit some of these overheads, it was just one of those <laughs> things where I thought... I've never seen someone in pickleball hit an overhead like this. It didn't look bad. It was just, I don't know, something about how they jumped just looked very funny to me. But, I mean, amazing shots. It just appeared funny for whatever reason. <laughs> but but then the third game. I was like, okay, we are in three games, and that last one was tight. I And my initial thought was, okay, maybe the women turned it down a little bit to mm-hmm. make it more entertaining because I think Anna Lee tried to hit a tweener in the second game. No, sorry, the tweener was in the no, third game. Was it? I could have sworn it was in the I, second game. I, I, you could be right, because you went back and clipped it. But the women were up 6-0 in the third game. And I yeah. just went, okay, we're about to see another pickle. That's about what I expected, I guess. And then the guys just grind back. Yeah, no, they and grind they back. they won. They, made, they won. That was crazy. It was, it was the fact they came back and they won. I think, I don't know, uh... <laughs> people were saying in my video that I, when I edited the highlights together, it was like, was, was Annalie pissed? Did she look upset? And I was like, I don't know if I was up six Oh, you know, in the third game and I, they came back and beat me. I'd, I'd kind of be pissed too, but you know, she seemed all right about it. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, when I was watching, no one really seemed, I mean, maybe at the end she got off the court kind of quick or something, you know, it was probably a little annoying to lose, especially to, people who don't necessarily play pickleball full time. But man, that was some of the most entertaining pickleball I've watched. I was watching it with my wife. She mm-hmm. thought it was entertaining too, you know, just guys versus uh, yeah. women and just yeah, and then tennis versus pickleball. I mean, no, it was a yeah, great tennis match. versus pickleball. Yeah, you got it all. You got it all in one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> go ahead. W- did you going into that match? I know you didn't get to watch it live. But if you had been betting beforehand, how do you think that would have gone? What would your prediction have been? Okay, well, if I was betting and money was on the line, I would have went with Annalie Waters and Jesse Irvin. Same. Yeah. I thought, for, I, and I still think, you know, this is where, again, exhibition match, it's hard to know. I think if you just went to Isner a lot and just dinked a ton, you'd probably win. Just move around, dink a lot. Don't speed the ball up because that, you know, that favors them or is a strong suit. Mm-hmm. of theirs so i don't know a lot of questions there but regardless i did not see that coming <laughs> yeah i didn't really well uh, i i thought they jesse and uh and they definitely would have won yeah because they were up 6-0 and so i i was surprised i mean i was surprised but also at the same time when i take a step back and look at it i'm also not as surprised just because obviously you know john isner jack sock they've, they've played doubles tennis together too so it's not to say that they don't have synergy together, right? Yeah. But they're world-class athletes from yeah. tennis. Like, it's it's no surprise that that they won, to me, um, honestly. Yeah. Maybe maybe a little bit more, you know, just because, um, you know, like you, were, like you were saying, 
it's an exhibition match, so we won't really know. If money's on the line, things would have been a little different. The playing would have been yeah. a little bit different. I would be curious to see, you know, a rematch. And then if you think about it too, even John Isner said in the post interview, I think in total they scored across those three games, they scored a total of seven points, seven or eight points less than total amount of that uh jesse and annalee scored across the three right so Mm -hmm. it's just the way that the points were distributed across those three games that they got a little lucky and they won does that kind of make sense you know because that one was rally scoring right uh couldn't tell you don't don't even ask me because i was just watching (laughs) like just the points like i was like i don't know what's going on with these the points people are changing you know win by two, win by one as, as the whole entire game was going along. Oh, oh, and people are also saying, Anna Lee, if you didn't um, change to win by two, you would have won because I think yes. they were at a game point and they won. And I mean... Well, was that game two? Yeah, it had to have been, I think. Yeah, game two. And now now that I remember, I'm, I'm looking, I have it up on the screen right now. They, in game two, it was 11-9, Isner and Sock. But, you know, all the players agreed to it, so everybody's on equal playing you know and wait was it 11 9 in that one what was the third game then maybe that was the the one where the third game was 13 11 to okay yeah and for people who didn't see what happened was at 10 10 it was supposed to be win by one and annalee said no let's win by two change it to win by two yeah and and it was her serve she was it was on her serve yes and and she won that point yep yep but so they would have won if she didn't change it Okay, true, like all evidence points to that, but also at the same time, you don't know that. If it was win by one, maybe that would have put some pressure. And you For know, sure, also, for you sure. Know, you know, Sock and Isner might have uh, you know, played a little differently. You, you, we, we won't know. But yes, theoretically, yes, they would have won. But, you know, don't don't cheapen I, I like all these people out here if they're like hating on the comments or whatever like don't don't be cheapening in the victory and the comeback that isner and sock you know put on you know what i'm saying e- even though it was an exhibition you know yeah yeah i don't know i thought i thought it was super interesting to watch and after seeing that i cannot imagine that anna lee if you put her and another top 10 guy together like let's say uh Let's say it's Riley and Anna Lee versus Ben and Colin. I think Ben and Colin are winning those games. Oh, really? Huh. I think so. You think so? In in for doubles? Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah. yeah, I guess. I don't know. I would like to see that matchup. I don't know if they'd win. I would love to right. see that matchup too. Yeah. I mean, I think Anna Lee can hang with with Ben and Colin. No, I it's I think she I think she can I think she can hang with guys, but I think I don't know. People make it sound if you just had neutral rankings that she would be in top 10 all players and i don't know if i agree with that after seeing her lose to two tennis players who might have 60 dupers if they had dupers jack sock probably would for sure i don't know if well in, isner would okay so doubles is a very hard thing you know to kind of quantify and debate this we won't know until they actually play but in the end uh, interview of that match, uh, Hannah Johns asked Anley Waters, like, hey, we saw you playing some singles with Jack Sock before this match. Who was winning? Who was coming out on top of that? And I think she said that the score, was, they, they didn't get to finish, but their score was 5-3 and Jack Sock was up 5-3. Yeah. 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 So I don't, I I don't know. I think she could beat some of the guys, but like, I don't think she, like if people are saying she'd be like top 10 in the guys, I, I just, for singles, I don't think there's a chance. I don't think so. Yeah. For doubles, and just based on so. talking to some other, talking to some other women about it and just knowing their experience playing some of the guys. Yeah. I, I just can't imagine it, but no, regardless, here's, so here's another thing that whenever this debate comes up, yeah, that annoys me a little bit is people think if you say she doesn't hang with the top 10 guys, that suddenly she's not an accomplished player or something. And I'm like, dude, she is still by far the best female player yeah, look at her to play this game. Her, yeah. Eight triple crowns last year. No one, I don't think any, no other female had a triple crown last year. Nope. It's like She's, she's killing it. She's in her own island in the women's division. It's not even close. 
Right, exactly. And she would do well against, you know, the other guys out there if she played with another guy against, like, two other guys uh, in, a, in a regular match. I think she would do really well and probably win some of those as well. But to dominate, you know, that, that'd be tough to kind of say. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know if I'd agree with that. But now if you, if you were, if it was regular scoring these games yeah, and Jack and Isner played those two, we'll say, let's say Annalie and Catherine because it seems like they're going to play more next year maybe. Okay. That matchup, they play 10 games. What do you think the split is? The split. Hmm. The split of games. Who wins? <laughs> if they played 10 games and money was on the line and they're playing for real, I think the split would be maybe 70-30 in Annalie Waters and Catherine's. Uh, that's and, the exact number I was thinking, too. Yeah, that's that's what I would say. Now, give, it, give, give I don't know, give Isner like three to six months. It'd probably be, uh, I, I think it'd be closer to probably 50-50 or maybe like even 60-40 for Jack for Jack Sock and Isner. That's that's the way sure. I see it. You know? Sure. Well, I hope we get to see more of this at some point. It would certainly be uh certainly be fun to see, but who knows? We'll have to wait for another exhibition or something. Yeah, no, the exhibition is great. So I mean also I just I'm glad that it's out there, but you know people are just <laughs> over social media and whatnot and the internet are just arguing about it a little bit. Yeah. Um, of you know tennis players would come in and dominate, et cetera, et cetera. And although I agree that, you know, they would come in and do very well to come in and completely dominate is I think not the case. There is going to be some adjustment period. You know, they do have to train just a little bit. I don't know for how long, but I think as pickleball progresses and more talent comes into the space, it's going to take longer for you to come in and break through. Just the talent is getting so deep. And yeah. People, I feel like they discount experience in pickleball. Like, like I was telling you before, like, let's say in some universe, Chris, right, where you decided to play tennis instead of pickleball, okay? And in that universe, you were also at the levels of Roger Federer, okay? <laughs> um, Are we talking about the current universe? That, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> If, if, if you and Roger Federer were the same skill level and you were both top top in tennis at the in your primes, right? And you and and you were 50-50, like you played 100 games and you you split 50-50 wins, 50-50 losses. You both played pickleball, it'd be the same. 50-50 wins, 50-50 losses. Now, if you went to pickleball first and you played pickleball for at least like two, three years and you still have the same skill level as Roger Federer, obviously you would have an advantage because you have more experience in pickleball. And so that experience counts for something. And then also, let's say you weren't as good as Roger Federer. Let's say you were maybe top 20, like, I don't know, let's say a Kei Nishikori in, in his prime, right? Who's had some wins on Roger, but has losing head to head. Uh, so not as good as him in tennis, but then you went over to pickleball and you played pickleball for like three years longer or four or five years or however many, and both you and Roger played again, right? I would still probably give it to you because you I don't have even think you would experience. need that many years, one to two yeah. years probably. Right, exactly. So I think that accounts for something, you know, that like you have experience in pickleball and pickleball is nuanced. But, you know, people argue like, oh, just give these top tennis players like, you know, a month, maybe three months. And I think it's too generous. Uh, you think it's too generous? I mean, I think for people to say only a month and suddenly they will be better than the top people in the game. Yeah. Who, we're, most of them not slouches in tennis. Obviously, they're not, you know, these top 100 guys or something. But the experience matters. Pickleball has nuances to it. Yeah. No. Totally agree. Totally agree. And I think it's it's at least three months to six months, probably longer now that the game is just you know changing in different ways and the new paddle technologies and the formats, etc. And then you know. People will have uh, the the talent, right? The depth is just expanding. So, yeah, I think I want to know how long pickleball has to be around before people stop saying, "Oh, wait for the tennis players to come in," or "Wait for the the real athletes," because at some point we're going to reach athletes who started in pickleball only, yeah, kind of like in tennis, born and raised on this sport, 
and they're just legends, you're not going to go, oh, yeah, well, if this guy just came in from tennis, he'd just be better. If you've been training on a pickleball court your entire life and you're you, they've been taking it as serious as tennis training. Yeah. They have all the experience in the world over that tennis player. Right, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, I can't wait to see. I, I, I thought this exhibition match was great to showcase the skills of some of these tennis players, but also showcase the skill of, you know, this hot pickleball players in the community right now. Yeah. yeah. No, it was it was a fun event. Obviously, things that could have been better, but I found it entertaining for some of those good exhibition matches. So good stuff overall. And I don't know, hopefully we'll see some more of that in the future. But yes. all right, Will, mm -hmm. let's get into the goods here. Oh, gosh. Here let's we go. talk about the MLP draft. So, so much in MLP. We are not going to name Everyone who got drafted, we've got a couple topics that we want to chat about. Let me scroll up on my notes here. Yeah, start uh, us there's off. There's just a <laughs> lot of a lot of teams, a lot of names. I don't want to read them all and just bore people with names. If you want to see it, go to Major League Pickleball's Instagram, and they have all of the teams and all the people on them. You can check that out there. Okay, what I want to start with first, Will, yeah. is who were your top three <laughs> top three top and top three bottom teams after oh, seeing the draft gosh that was so that's so hard okay okay so i'll go with my top three all right in no particular order Seattle? oh no, no no i want an order you want it in order oh. actually okay okay i won't make you give an order okay okay well if you if all right i i kind of have them in order all right uh so oh man okay so my first order is the fives. It's the okay. fives, which is Annalie Waters, James Ignatowicz, Leah Jansen, Hayden Patrickin, and then Seattle Pioneers. After that, Ben Johns, Tyler Lung, Etta Wright, Megan Dijon Mustard, and then New York Hustlers: Anna Bright, Rafa Hewitt, Tyson McGuffin, Lacey Schneeman. That's my and which is going to be the loudest team in all of MLP by far. You just took three of the loudest people in the game and put yeah. them on the team. I mean, look, look, remember when we were tagging along with Zane at Columbus, Ohio, and we were just talking to him? He said, dude, or in, in one of the interviews or what he said, dude, MLP is not about pickleball. It's about energy. And if it's really about energy, like NY Hustlers. That team's going to prove it. <laughs> yeah, that, that team is stacked if it's all about energy. But I had to pick... You know, the fives in Seattle Pioneers. I mean, first of all, you have the top two picks. And Lee Waters, like arguably the most dominant player like out yep. there, right? Just everything, right? Mixed, women's, singles. Singles. You know? you, you, and then she picked Jane. And we know, and maybe we're biased because we know James and we know how good he is, like, you know, but he's getting better. And he's also a former champion of MLP. And then uh, obviously Leah Jansen is also doing great. And uh, I think... You know, Leia she has, Jansen. yeah, she has good energy. I think Hayden is probably the weakest of that squad, but also if they go to a dream breaker, like aside singles from Hayden, is Patrick, singles is stacked. You have Annalie Waters, James Ignatovich, and Leah Jansen. Like, yo, you <laughs> like, I think you're stacked. Yeah. Um, so that's why they're my number one pick. And then obviously Seattle Pioneers, kind of same thing. Ben Johns, right? Yep. Can't discount him. Um, uh, interesting to see uh, Tyler Lung in this space. I think they'd be a strong doubles team. You got two really strong forehands in the middle. Tyler Lung, Ernie's, everything. Um, Edda Wright's coming up, you know, in the space and has, I think, more power than a lot of the other women out there. And she's had a pretty good end of this year. Um, Megan Dijon, kind of like the same thing, got reached. So I have high hopes for Seattle Pioneers. And like I said, with she kind of feels like the Hayden Patrick Quinn of that team. That to me. team, okay. Well, I and I don't, I have not followed her results very closely, mm -hmm. so I could be totally wrong. I don't remember her having any notable wins or podiums last year. Again, yeah, I would. There was a good portion of the year that I did not follow the pro scene that yeah. closely, so I could be totally wrong. But yeah. that's just my initial gut. I mean, same, same with me. We're we're working with like imperfect information. It's not like we went through and we tallied all the 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 accolades that they've yeah, had. Yeah, just throughout for the everyone year, right? to know, I literally just told Will, just go pick your top three, top and bottom. And he was like, I'm doing all this calculus in my head. And I was like, No, 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 dude, just pick based on your gut. I'm not looking for okay. duper math here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are my top three. All right, bottom three. A little bit tougher. Actually, no. Well, hold you, up. Let me you, do my top yes, three. Yes, you do your top three. Yes. I, I want to hear your top three. Let's go. Okay, so we lined up on the fives and Seattle Pioneers. And then oh. NY Hustlers, they were really, I 
it was them uh-huh. or one other one, but I ended up picking Hard Eights, okay, which is Hard Eights. Riley Newman, AJ Kohler, Lindsay Newman, and Mary Brasha. Okay, they were also in the mix. So my third was between, yeah, NY Hustlers and then the Hard Eights with Riley Newman, AJ Kohler, Brasia, Newman. Um, and then it was also Florida Smash with Jesse Irvin, Georgia Johnson, Travis Rettmeyer, and Colin Johns. The reason why I took in uh, NY Hustlers was because I was like, if they go to a Dream Breaker, singles is stacked for New York Hustlers. Anna Bright, Rafi Hewitt, Tyson McGuffin, and Lacey Schneeman. Like, that's, that's how I feel. Not to say that the yeah. Hard Eights couldn't play singles, but Riley Newman, I'm sure, can play some singles, but really doesn't, nor does AJ Kohler, Mary Brassi. And I mean, Lindsay, I, I have no idea. Exactly. So that was the question mark. So that's... That, that is a good point that I had. I didn't really factor in the the dream breaker there. So I could see where NY hustlers might be better overall. Yeah. I was just looking at the matchups. They're safer if they go to a dream breaker. Right. I I was literally looking at the matchups. I'm like, okay, like if you had doubles first, like how many wins would you likely get? And I mean, that's why Ben Johns and Anley waters. I was like, you know, their doubles is so strong. And then if they go to a dream breaker, like that's, that's how my thought process went. Yeah. Yeah. That's smart. All right, I'm going to start with my bottom three. All right, let's go. I, I, I'm, I'm really curious to see this. Okay, this one's hilarious after what you just told me because you said Florida Smash was potentially in your top three. I put them in my bottom three. <laughs> what? How are you going to put Florida Smash in your bottom three? Tell me who it was. Is it Travis and Colin as the men? Yeah, Travis and Colin as the men. And then who are the women? The women is Jesse Irvine and Georgia Johnson. Okay, it's not, it's not that it's a bad team but you have two good singles players and then two single or two people who are question marks well dude colin johns i know colin johns is a good singles player he just doesn't but he has to be going you grow up with ben i'm sure he's not bad you play tennis like there's no way he he's he's good he has to be like pretty amazing and travis rettenmeyer definitely plays singles i mean mean, obviously yeah put 100k on the line to challenge like two four fives or five o's like you you best be good at singles georgia johnson obviously great yeah. singles player jesse irvin don't know i'm sure she, she doesn't play. play singles because of like cartilage issues yes exactly but yeah i i think they're solid also wait quick quick little story give a shout out to travis rettenmeyer because i was looking at the draft when it came out and then i saw you know obviously travis rettenmeyer is one of the co-owners for florida smash and obviously he drafts himself but i i asked him on a post he said i said uh travis what would happen hypothetically if another team decided to draft you and you couldn't draft yourself onto your own team (laughs) you know what and his response his because right because i don't know if anybody's ever thought that's hilarious right and uh his response was dude i'd play my ass off for that team no matter what even if it's against my own team yeah, like that's the bottom line and i was like who who which would the interest be higher and would it be in that other team or would it be in florida smash that's tough huh exactly no but no Tra- travis is travis is a competitor and i i totally believe him that he would have played his his heart out for whatever team drafted him so shout yeah. out to travis my travis for that you know he's a he's a real one salutes salutes yeah. to you travis salutes to you now nah, he seems great and i have him to thank for uh he didn't teach me, but I guess inspiring me to learn that paddle spinning trick because I do it constantly, constantly. now. When I even if I'm waiting for a serve, I'm spinning my paddle. Yeah, and they're they're calling the score, and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I should probably you, put this you back got in that my thing. Hand. You got that thing down good. He's also done a few, I guess, like tips with uh, in conjunction uh, in collaboration with Selkirk TV, and I think his tips are some of the best like quick tips you find on social media. In mm, my, I'll have to check him out. Yeah, in my personal opinion, he also has a. Did you know this? He has, he has a podcast with the uh, Graham. It's called. Is is it tennis sucks? Yeah, it's called tennis sucks. It's actually pretty I good. I need to go listen to that. It's actually pretty good. They have good quality, and I think Travis just like says it like it is, and I appreciate that. And you know, show shout outs sure. to tennis sucks. You know, but anyways, all right, m- moving along. All right, what was my the rest other of your bottom? two? Mm-hmm. BLQK Black Bears. Okay, which was. Andrea oh, Coop, gonna, Dylan yep. Frazier, Federico Straxrud, and Maggie Brasia. Yes. I think it I think the two question marks there are Federico and Maggie. They're both good players, but I think I don't know, I'd be curious to see in men's for Federico and then mixed. I don't know what the pairing's gonna be. Obviously Dylan and Andrea are very accomplished players, but looking at the whole list, I don't recall seeing one that I felt was weaker i don't know it's just they felt very up in the air and then my last one was 
Cabo Vamos. Or uh, Vamos. Vamos is that that's with uh, Jay de Villiers. Um, let me see. Simone. Uh, yeah, uh, Alice Jones and Eric Lang. Yeah. Yeah. Elise Jones, not Elise. Alice. Yeah, Elise Jones. Sorry, Elise. Yeah. Um, yes. I was about to pick them, but uh, I couldn't just because Jay's my guy. So ah. I'm, I'm, I'm biased. So, so like, such, a, such a simp for Jay. <laughs> Jay's my guy. <laughs> 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 All right. Who are, who are yours? Okay. Um, let me see. Should I, should I try to put this in order? Was nah, your, just, was your, just, just hit them to okay, me. Okay. Okay. BLQK bears, black bears. Yep. Okay. Yep. ATX pickleballers. Oh, who's on that team? JW Johnson. And you're probably like, what the F? The Kawamoto sisters and Gabriel mm-hmm. Tardio. Okay. I see. I wondered about them too. I really wasn't sure where to put them. And that one's tough. Gabriel's the weakest one in there. But the Kawamotos are no slouches, and I think they do pretty well in women's. They're they're solid. I mean, they're this was hard. They're they're super solid, and I mean, I I honestly haven't seen them play together that much. But I just know they're they're solid. They're they're solid as a rock. My own my only the only reason I I chose them to be quite honest with you was going back to how I uh, rank the others. If if MLP is about energy. <laughs> and not about pickleball. I just don't see the energy coming from them. That's it. That's the only reason. Not to say that they couldn't get loud, you know, or get passionate. Wait. Yeah. You mean to tell me the reason you didn't put them in the bottom is because JWS used that Franklin paddle? <laughs> is that why you put them? I'm surprised you didn't put him in the bottom because he was using that paddle. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not that savage. But that that had to be part of your reasoning. Had to be. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hit me, hit me with this last one. Who oh got my gosh! I, I, first of all, I hope Julie Johnson doesn't hear that part of the clip. She's gonna be, she's gonna be hating on us next time she sees us. Oh no, we we like Julie. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. My last, um, uh, Las Vegas Night Owls. Oh, who was on that team? Uh, this was hard. Vivian David, Deco Bar, Laura Stratman, Kyle Yates. Really? Yeah. You put that team below Vamos. I mean, obviously, I'm not gonna like pick Bob because Jay is my guy. But yes, I put them, and like, it was more or less just I had to choose somebody, you know. And I guess my reasoning uh, behind it is I just feel I don't know. Kyle Yates and Laura Stratman can kind of be a little inconsistent at some of the MLP events. Right, I don't know. I just feel like Laura Simon has like really I don't know. big Hard eyes for semifinals with Kyle this is, Yates. This is true. This is true. But I don't know. I just picked them. And also, like, I think I remember parts of last year. I think maybe they 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 wouldn't be uh, mixed partners. But I think uh, Deckel and Vivian David, like, they were partners. They were mixed partners for yeah a while. And I don't remember them performing that well or podium podiuming. And sure. that was that was also kind of part of my reasoning. That's really just what it is. Basically, no what real, I'm real. seeing or hearing is yeah. that you would have put Jay's team last, but because you're so biased to Jay, you had to just pick some other team. <laughs> this is this is partly true. <laughs> <laughs> See, Jay, I don't know. I haven't met Jay. Jay does seem awesome, but I'm not sure about your team. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, okay. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll see after the first event how the... Okay, my hard eights prediction is going to be kind of weird because Riley's not going to be at the first one. So if we're going by the first one, I would put NY Hustlers in there. Okay. You know what we should do? What? Every time a new event is coming up after each MLP, we should try and re-guess. Okay, to see who wins? Or, yeah. or, or the Okay, top? actually, let's let's put our prediction right now. Who comes last... Who comes first at the first MLP? What? Yep. <laughs> okay, who comes last and who comes first? Okay, so let's let's go with the easy with first. Who comes first? I think I think the fives are coming in first. You think fives? I think I'm I'm giving it to the fives. I'm oh man, I'm really torn between pioneers and hustlers. I'm uh, well we'll see if if how that Craig Zane is. I'll say NY Hustlers because okay. of the energy. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. What's, all what's right. the bottom? What's the, the bottom? The bottom. Last. 
I'm going to go with BLQK Bears. All right. All right. <laughs> you already know mine is Jay's team. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. Well, we will revisit this. Maybe Jay will make me eat my words. I mean, last is kind of a toss up, to be completely honest. Yeah, we won't. I, know. That could be so many people, but. That's that's my guess for now. Well, I just hope you know they come. They, like, what if Jay or whoever on our teams, like on our bottom, they come up to us and have a word with us when we see them at MLP? It'll be so funny. Jay's gonna come that up. That would to you. be really funny. Just a confrontation out of nowhere. Yeah, Jay's <laughs> gonna be coming at the end and is like, "How dare you?" <laughs> After he wins the whole thing, that would be even funnier. <laughs> <laughs> that would, I, you know, that I wouldn't even be mad. I wouldn't, I'd be happy for the guy. Okay. 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 Good, good. Well, one of the last things I want to talk about here is who, okay. The worst or most surprising non-drafted picks. I had three. Yeah. I didn't tell you to think about this beforehand. So I don't know if you have, but mm-hmm. the, in my opinion, the three most notable and surprising were Rob Nunnery. Okay. Susanna Barr. Okay. And Paris Todd. Now, Ooh, Paris, yep. it sounds like she just wasn't even in the draft. And no one really knows the reason. I've heard a lot of different rumors. I'm not going to go into those here. Just I don't want to spread any bad information. But I don't know. She is not in MLP at all, it appears. So huh. Rob and Susanna were in the draft and just didn't get picked. I am surprised that Susanna didn't get picked. I feel that she... She has a very unorthodox playing style, but consistently I feel that she does pretty well over the year in women's events. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, didn't she recently just uh, podium? She podium recently, right, with the Etta PPA, Wright? bronze, right? Yeah, bronze. Was that with Etta Wright? I don't remember who it was with. I just know that she podiumed. So like at a PPA, that's legit. Yeah, that is legit. Yeah, heck yeah. So, so I, mean, I don't, you know, I didn't get to look at the all the list of women and who maybe she would have been a better replacement for, but I am surprised she didn't make it in. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I would probably agree with that one. I just feel like, I don't know, she's such a consistent presence, like MLP. Yeah. I mean, it could just be her quirky style or whatnot. And just the way that the way that she she hits it it just comes off so fast and you're just not expecting like oh you know and i think it definitely throws some people off guard for sure totally totally well the biggest one in my opinion i mean everyone's been talking about it on social media yeah how on earth did rob nunnery not get drafted i mean that is crazy to me there are several guys i probably would have put him above okay do you have a list of the several guys i mean my my first guess let's see the last guy that was picked in the draft was Hayden, Hayden, Hayden right? Hayden Patrick. Hayden. Yes. No, Hayden no, was the last one. No offense to Hayden. You know, he's he's like a young kid. He's actually very good. I just feel like he has so much upside, but I don't know. I, I just wouldn't pick him over some of the other, yeah, some of the guys like Rob, you know? Yeah. I'm I'm really surprised, especially after looking at all the rear, uh, real clear stats. Yeah. If you look them up on Instagram, they did a lot of stats on the last MLP and Rob came out on top or top three in a lot of different stats in there. And now there has been debate. I did ask one pro what, you know, his opinion on the stats. And <laughs> they he, don't care, do they? He, <laughs> he said the pros or a lot of them think it's a joke. I have no ideas which ones that is. I didn't ask, but he didn't seem to be a fan of the stats at all. He thought they were essentially meaningless for the most part. You need the stats eventually, right? It's going to it's gonna matter, right? No, I think stats are important. But I think, as we've seen with stats so far, it's hard to know what you should be valuing the most in pickleball. I think you could come up with a player's overall impact rating mm-hmm. differently depending on how you wanted to weight yeah. certain aspects of the game and I don't know if we know which stats are the most important yet right. or if we're even keeping we don't have track a good algorithm. of the most exactly okay I see so, what you're saying I think that needs a little bit of work but I mean what do you think of the current stats um no I think it's cool I think I think it's I think it's actually really dope to see um these numbers it just brings some uh I guess way to quantify performance and and help with some of these debates on who's better than who and who should win what 
uh, for team owners and teams to select partners, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's just going to be so important. I mean, if what the future pickleball looks like where teams are moving towards, you know, predominantly left side players or right side players or certain, you know, unions and partnerships, like these stats are going to matter, right? Because you need this data to, um, as as a kind of a a reference point to see, to, to compare with your performance, right? And make better decisions moving forward. So I think it's super important. And also like all the, the talks of sports betting, et cetera, you need these these stats because what else are you going to, how, how else are you going to develop the spread, right? For betting, if I, you don't have the stats. I definitely think the stats are going to come into pretty big play, but I also think in the current state and how soon this draft came with a lot of the stats that were coming out, I just wonder maybe when it gets to a couple of the last picks, that is when the stats start to really matter. But your first round and maybe even second round picks, I think those are probably just obvious based on how the last year went in terms of podiums yeah, and maybe just what you know about players. So I, I wonder if the stats, at least for this current MLP and the stats we had, if those were really that important. I personally don't think it would really matter that much until probably your not. maybe third or fourth round pick. Yeah, probably not. And I think you need a whole year of consistent, solid stats in order for these stats to hold more weight in your decision making, right? Yes. And so I guess speaking of decision making, you know, with with Rob not being selected for the premier uh league, I I think it's it's probably pretty safe to say, like so I think you and I both know, and they, I think everybody knows that Rob and Ben don't get along, right? I mean, on his podcast, right? He he, he references Ben Johns as Colin's brother. So clearly they don't get yeah. along for reasons that we won't go into and we won't speculate on, but you can, you know, do your own search and come to your own conclusions. But the fact is they obviously don't get along. So clear, so obviously if Ben's getting picked for a team, he's going to have some input into his team. He's not going to pick Rob, right? Yeah. Like there, there's no way because they don't get along. So there's yeah. that. And if I'm going to, I'm going to speculate a little bit more, right? So let's think about this. So then you have Annalie Waters, right? She obviously is partners with Ben. They've had a lot of success. Maybe that relationship that she has with Ben, maybe that has some sway into why maybe she didn't pick, her her team didn't pick Rob as well or and, you know, picked Hadrian over Rob. But also maybe she just wanted somebody her own age to be on the team. Who knows? I have no idea. You know yeah, you got to balance it out with the the oldies like James. Right, right, exactly. So there's definitely, there's probably some politics definitely going on that we can neither confirm nor deny. Obviously, you know, we don't have perfect information. We don't know, you know, how some of the other players are feeling. But I still feel that he got snubbed a little bit. But also at the same time, you mentioned this too. And if you're a team owner and and Rob was on your list, like, yes, he's good. I think he's he's good. And the stats show that even though they don't carry much weight but he was also very injury prone last yeah. year he right? was i don't know how many tournaments he did last year but he did not play very many right exactly so that could have also you know came into effect in you selecting the player i think it's going to be a combination of things it's it's probably partly because of his injuries um and maybe there's some politics involved but you know, I could definitely just, see it being a combination of a lot of things because what I was telling you is if I am a team owner yeah, and I did not get to see someone perform very much for the year, I don't know if Rob had any podiums. I haven't, I haven't looked anything up, so maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but I don't remember any big notable ones. His knee was obviously messed up. He had some other surgeries that were mm-hmm. keeping him out and health was a pretty big uh, thing. I I. Don't know if he said on one of his previous podcasts that he's moving back to the States. He is. He might have said that, but obviously, okay, so he is. I don't know if when all that became news to everyone, but if you're an owner and you know he lives in Hawaii and then practicing, you know, there's just a lot of different things, and I wonder how much that was weighted. I would think if I was picking that the injuries would be a huge factor because you, unless you just know Rob closely, 
you wouldn't know what the status of those injuries are. And maybe you just assume, yeah, well, if that's a problem next year and we have to have a sub every time, that sucks. Right, exactly. So that's probably why the owners also leverage some of the players to help with the picks. You know, because yeah. I, I and maybe heard... there's a lot of chemistry stuff that goes into that. Right, exactly. And I mean, that's part of the reason why. So back to me, like me speculating, like, you know, obviously, Emily, maybe she didn't pick that. I think, let's see who else. Oh, obviously, um, Colin Johns, if he was picked on a yeah. team, he'd probably have some influence. Like, yeah, if, if, you know, if he's, you know, for his brother or whatnot, maybe don't yeah. pick Rob, probably. But like, at the same time, you know, can either confirm nor deny anything. This is me purely speculating, like, on, you know, imperfect information and really just rumors for the most part. But I, I still think that he is definitely skill wise, like, premier level, premier level for sure. Yeah, I, I think for sure couple people that could have been replaced by you know in in just terms of raw talent i think he's probably better than some of the people that that got picked so it's definitely a bummer to not see him in there i mean he's you know he's been doing yeah. great with the podcast well, like I, I can tell you one thing he's gonna be working his his butt off in the challenger league oh yeah when he, he he has to be drafted i feel like he has to be drafted in the challenger the challenger oh league. i mean if he's not one of the first picks i'm shocked yeah me too actually i i don't even do you have a list you don't have a list do you of like i don't have the list up on me right now but there was a list that was posted posted of like i guess whoever else was left in the draft for, yeah. for the challengers okay okay well we'll have to touch base back on that once i guess the challengers get drafted do you know when that is gonna be i think it might be in the next few days there might be the possibility that it's getting posted tomorrow tuesday we're recording this on a monday uh so if it's posted maybe we'll record like a small little update or something but i don't know that there was the information was shaky about when it was going to get posted who we knew was on whose team and what the team names were there was I, you know a lot of confusing stuff hmm. i did see though one of our minnesota players on the uh potential draft Oh, they yeah? were top was it? 20 or top 15 for the females, uh, Jennifer Tavernier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The mini so, ninja. Yes. yes. And Onik, I think he was the last pick for the men, but no he way. was in the list. He was, was on the list? the list? Heck yeah. yeah. All right, Jennifer and Onik. All right, I'll be looking out for them. Onik and Jennifer are very good. Obviously, I've played with both of them, so I'm probably biased. But Dude, Jennifer get them on a team. Good. Yeah, get them on the team. Minnesota team, that'd be pretty sick. Dude, that would be really sick. Yeah. I think Grant, my buddy, Grant Bond, he's also um, on the draft. Probably I think for, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, Challenger. I can't remember who else. I saw it, like, brief, like just a list, but not a full list. But, yeah, I'd be interested to see. I feel like the Challenger might be um, a little more, I mean, interesting uh, once it starts airing, just to see new faces, right? And, yeah, like, new I, I'm curious to see it. You know, just see what the... What the level of competition looks like, what the team dynamics are, I think it'll be kind of fun to see. Okay, cool. Now, so I think that's pretty much most of the episode. I've got a couple just real quick things I wanted to let the audience know about. Okay. Uh, first, I am going to be doing a lot more with my website, thepickleballstudio.com, in 2023. I think what's going to happen is I have so many paddles that get sent to me and I can't possibly keep up with them. So a few things. One, written reviews are probably going to go up on the website before the video review comes out if a video review is going to happen for that mm. paddle. So by the time you guys see this podcast, I think my Black Ace review is already going to be out. But I just want people to be aware that if you want to keep up with a lot of paddle information, I'm going to be putting some work in on the website to make that more of a, a readable place keep up with paddles, maybe more first impressions on some stuff that I get to hit briefly. And then I totally had one other update that I'm forgetting. It oh, happens. no, I remember. <laughs> I, I was just going to talk about the Black Ace really briefly. Uh -huh. the, the tides have turned, dude. I After hitting this for about a week now, uh -huh. every single time I use it, I like it more and more, and I get no better way. at using it every single time. No way. You do? I could have yeah. sworn I was like, "There's no way he likes this because you like you like a plush soft paddle." I mean, you you play with a zero zero three, and before that, you played with the Yola Hyperion sixteen millimeter. So 
It it is definitely I'm the shocked. opposite of what I look for in a paddle. That's for uh, sure. I'm actually shocked. But I think what I've ended up really enjoying about it, because I know this about myself, when I've used softer paddles, specifically the 003, I understand that I lack put away power, both mechanically and with the paddle choice that I have. And then usually if I'm playing competitively, I leave it up to my brother or whoever else I'm playing with. You know, when I played with Shay, usually they're the left side player and they're the one putting away. So I haven't cared too much about it, but there are a couple things about the black ace I've really enjoyed. The swing weight is really low. So it <clears throat> is about a hundred out of the box. And for reference, the lightest pedal I have tested was the Pro Canix Pro Flight, and that was 90. And that thing, it's just so light in the hand. Same thing with gearboxes. They're all in the 90s. So if you've used those, you kind of have a reference of how hmm. uh, easy it is to maneuver. So you're going to weight it up? Case. So, Can you weight it up? Yes. And I weighted mine up from about 7, 8-ish to about 8, 6. And I think even after that weight, the weight, uh, the swing weight only went up to about 105 which is still less than most elongated paddles, hmm. I'm considering weighing it up to 9.5 or more, what? which will probably bring it in line with what I'm used to swinging okay, okay. with my 003. Weighting it to 9.5. So, yeah. Wait, and I think wait. that the paddle would feel really solid. 9.5 ounces. Yeah. <laughs> How like that the the side the edges of the paddle is so thin? How are you gonna get that much weight, dude? You just layer. You just I so I need to get <laughs> oh I need to see this per inch lead tape. But I used six strips on each side. Oh my gosh! So to get it so to get it to nine five, I'm probably gonna need another six on each oh side. Oh my gosh! That okay? All right. Yeah. So Don't it's kind of crazy, arm. but I I think the paddle gives you a lot of customizability I, even with all that weight swing weight's still going to be low you know the resets and thirds that's still the biggest question mark for me but it keeps getting better and every time i have to put the paddle down to work on another paddle review i'm like dang i really want to pick up the black ace again so we'll see i don't know that i'm going to switch i'm not 100 percent convinced yet someone has my 003 and they're going to have it until beginning ish of january so i'm not even going to get to hit it for a while so maybe he'll come back and I'll pick it up and go, wow, I was absolutely crazy for thinking I'd switch to a black ace. But I don't know. Right now, I'm, I'm really digging it. All right. Well, shoot. That That is definitely surprising to me. Not going to lie. All right. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> yes. I'm, I am excited to use it more and more. Uh, especially because uh, that was the other point. At the net, your hands are so fast. And you just have to do so little to make that ball fly that when I go to other paddles... It just feels so much more work to maneuver the thing. And then putting the ball away, even if it's a decent-ish power paddle, just feels harder. Like, <laughs> I don't feel like you have to swing at all. You just kind of bump it, and the ball just explodes. Explodes off. Would you say it has more power than Power Air, 002, or what, what are the other higher For me power personally, paddles? I'm going to say yes. I believe that it is the most powerful legal paddle on the market. Okay. That's funny you said legal. <laughs> oh, well, I had to say it because I didn't say it in an Instagram reel I made, and all these people were going, well, what about the vice? You you said the vice was one of the most <laughs> powerful things. And I did, and I just thought, I didn't think I had to specify legal paddles when I talked about this stuff. It, if I go grab a tennis racket, it would be more powerful than everything, but we obviously <laughs> know I'm not talking about that. That's true. I true. don't know. I get it. You know, the vice obviously resembles a pickleball paddle more than a tennis racket, but I don't know. I just yeah. thought it was funny that people were making me clarify legal or not legal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> yeah, crazy stuff, but yeah, I don't know. You've, you've got anything else? Well, uh, no, I'm still on my paddle search. I'm glad you are, you know, gearing towards the paddles that you like. I'm still on my, my never ending paddle search. I think I have the grass is always greener on the other side syndrome. You know, I kind of think you do have that a little bit. How long do you think we should let the viewers decide? How long do you think before will lands on, the paddle I, let us I, know in the comments i don't think it's gonna happen because new paddles just keep coming out and apparently chris you got me uh you, you got pro Kenix to send me a black ace i don't know when that's gonna come but now i'm curious to give it more of a chance so we'll see um but i'd be curious to see if it goes from your one of your least favorite paddles to top or not top or not i mean i am looking for a more powerful paddle that i can still kind of dink and play the short game with um right now though uh if i did have to go to a tournament like today 
and be competitive, I would probably pick the 14 millimeter Hyperion probably or mm. the Solaire. Okay. Right? Or it would be some sort of 14 millimeter All right, uh, paddle. So that's beating out the, the power air for you, huh? Um, yeah, I think like the power is just, I mean, obviously it's not as powerful, but what I gain back in the short game and the dinking, the resets is just way more beneficial than that little bit of increased extra pop and power for me. Um, funny enough though, I did go play back with the, the power air a little bit and, uh, the dinkings and stuff in the short game felt a little bit better i think my touch just got a little bit better i think just had to like step away from it for a little bit but as of right now um yeah one of the solaires or the yellow hyperion 14 millimeter and plus i i miss having the longer handle where the power air also has a short handle and it's kind of hard for the two-handed backing which i'm using a lot more now so it's just a little more uncomfortable if they come out with a power air that has a little bit longer handle i'd be curious to try it i'm also curious to try when they come out with the commercial version of the 003 because i actually do like the 003 a lot as well but if it was more like just more powerful maybe i'd give it a shot but you know i might guess that almost has to be what they do because the only complaint is it needs more weight. That's what everyone ends up doing. And when I tell people about it, I say, if you're not, if you don't like using lead tape, then don't buy this paddle because you will not unlock this paddle's full potential unless you put lead tape on it. So I would just think more weight closer somewhere in the head, maybe about halfway up the paddle ish. Yeah. You add some more weight. That's kind of what I think they're going to end up doing. I just don't know what else they would improve. I, I sometimes I worry that it'll be worse <laughs> than what the zero zero three is now because I'm like it's it's already so nice. It's already so having nice. Having lead tape, but gotcha. I add lead tape to everything, so it doesn't even matter. I know that's the thing. I hate adding lead tape. I just don't. I don't know. I can't be bothered with it. So the closer something is to stock, like great out of the box, like the more I gravitate towards it. Which is I think the reason why I like the Solaire so much. Also, why I like the original Diadem Warrior so much because i just felt like they were just so good out of the box but yeah that's pretty much it everything needs lead tape man everything's improved with lead tape (laughs) for sure man for sure you i'm i'm working on it it's probably gonna be a little bit because i'm sure i'm gonna end up in a endless rabbit hole of research but i'm working on some more interesting paddle stats and some more things about lead tape to make a video about and just hearing what you just said and what I'm writing a script for, okay. we're in like polar opposite. Like I'm going full Customized. level 3000 nerd mode. <laughs> and you're over here like, dude, I don't even want to put the lead tape on my paddle. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> out here to have fun. Give me a two by four. I'll play with that. I'm, a, I'm good. Just don't, don't make me you add won't, lead tape. You won't because you're always on the grass is greener. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, I think that is a good place to wrap this episode. Thanks everyone for listening. And... We will see you guys after the holidays. Hope you guys have a a Merry Christmas and And a Happy New Year. (laughs) Yeah. Later.